Hello and welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In this video, we're going to identify the domain and the range of a function when we're given its graph. Before we get started with that, let's just go over some, some notation. So previously in the coordinate plane, we used x, y to represent the coordinates of an ordered pair. More commonly in function notation, we use x, f of x, and this is just the generic assuming that this is the name of the function. So if the name of the function is g, then we would use g of x. If it's r, we would use r of x, or sometimes when it's r, it's t, so it would be t, comma r of t, where x is the distance left or right that the point is from the origin, and f of x represents the distance above or below the x-axis that that point is located. So for example, if we look right here, at this point here, we recognize this as 4, comma 1, where from here to here, this is the x value, and then from here to here, is the f of x value. So from the origin, it's a distance of 4, and then from the x-axis, it's up 1. So it's positive 4, positive 1. Just to review the definition of a domain, the domain of a function is the set of real numbers which produce a real number output. The domain can have restrictions based on the type of function that we're given. So most square root functions have restrictions as well as rational functions. However, the domain could also be determined based on its graph. So if you're given a graph and you see that it starts and ends somewhere, that's how we would determine the domain is based on what we're given, the information we're given. To determine the domain when given the graph of a function, see how far the graph extends left and right. The domain is based on the x values, so find the least and greatest x values. Right, so if a graph, let me put a graph up here, kind of like the last one, if we just use this, this would be right here, Whatever this x value is, whatever this is, that would be the uh, least domain value. And then over here, this would be the most domain value. When we represent domain, we do use the brackets and parentheses. So if the endpoints are included, we would use brackets. And if the endpoints are not included, we would use parentheses. If there is an arrow or there's an indication that there is no end, then the domain would extend to infinity in that direction. So we really do look for very definite endpoints. If we do see the endpoints, that means that that is where this particular function ends. If we don't, if we see a graph and all of the space on the graph is taken up by this, something like that, where this is our viewing window, we might assume that uh, it extends in this direction and in this direction because there's no indication that it actually stops where the window that we can view stops. The domain can be given in the context of the problem too. So sometimes you might be given something and it might say f of x equals x squared, and then it might say negative 2 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 2. This is defining the domain here. So this is telling you we're only looking at this function, f of x equals x squared, within the bounds of negative 2 to 2. The range of the function. So the range is determined by any possible output based on allowable or defined inputs. So what we'd be looking for on a graph is how low it goes. So we're looking for the lowest point on the graph to the highest point on the graph. So here, the lowest point on the graph would be right here. And the highest point appears to be up here. So we'd be looking at the, the y values here. So this is our minimum y value. That would be the minimum of the range. This appears to be the tallest y value, the, the, the one that's furthest north, I suppose. Um, so that would be the, the greatest value in the range. The range can be tricky to identify if you're given an equation. Um, we're not going to necessarily focus on that because here we're only looking at graphs. Um, but just keep in mind that if you are given an equation, it can be a little bit tricky. It helps to visualize it. Um, if you're given the graph, the range is the lowest point to the highest point. Okay, so let's look at some examples. So here's f of x. So the domain, I see here that we have an open circle that indicates that this particular point is not a part of the function, it's just the end point, but it's not included. And that particular point is negative four comma two. Um, and then, so that's the furthest left. Now the fact that that's the furthest left, that's the least, and how do we say we don't include negative four? We would use a parenthesis instead of a bracket. So we would say negative four comma, and then it goes all the way to this point here, which is a closed circle, indicating that point is included in the domain. This is the point 6, 2. We only want the, the, the domain refers to the x value, so we go up to 6, and we want to include 6, so we use a bracket. 
for the range, we want to go from the furthest down the graph goes, the furthest down it goes is down here. And what we're concerned with with the range is identifying the y value or the f of x. So this is x and this is f of x, although in this case it didn't matter since they were both negative 2. That point is included, it's a closed circle, so we're going to say the range goes from negative 2, and then we want to find the tallest point. This one, remember, over here was not included, so we're not going to look at that one. We're going to focus on the one that is included since it has the same f of x value, and the range goes up to 2, and we do include it because this point said we did. If this point was moved down here, and the graph looked like this, then we would not include 2, which would be sort of the tallest point, we would not include 2 because it was an open circle. Okay, then we're also going to just look at um, finding specific values based on what we're given. So this is asking us to find uh, the, the, the range, out, the output, when x is negative 2. So here's negative 2 here. We go down to where it is on the graph, and it turns out that f of negative 2 is negative 2. Here it's asking us to figure out what the output value is when we have 0 as our x. So 0 as our x means we don't go left or right. Here's where the graph is. At 0, it's at negative 1. Okay, in this funky example, uh, we want to identify the domain and range, and then g of negative 1 and g of 1. So the domain, remember that's the furthest left and the furthest right we go. The furthest left is over here at negative 2, and negative 2 is included, so we're going to use a bracket, negative 2. And then it stops here at 1, where 1 is not included. However, down here, 1 is included, so there's no break in the graph. Uh, excuse me, there's no break in the domain. There is a break in the graph. There is definitely a break, and you can see it. It's right there. Um, but there's no break in the domain because it, while it ends here at 1, it does pick back up down here. And see here how it doesn't have a, there's no point, there's, there's no open or closed circle? That indicates that this graph is going in this direction indefinitely. So we would say that the domain goes from negative 2 to, to infinity. And infinity, we always use a parenthesis. For the range, so we're looking for the least point. Now again, since this is going down, 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 there is no least point. So the range is going to start at negative infinity, and then it comes up, and it comes up to here, and then it keeps going up, and it looks like it goes all the way up to there, which would give us 4. So the range is from negative infinity to 4, and we'll use a bracket because it looks like 4 is included both there and here. Next, it's asking us to figure out to evaluate g of negative 1. So here's negative 1. If we go up and find the graph at negative 1, there it is. When we're at negative 1, the output is 3. So g of negative 1 is 3. And g of 1, so I'm going to erase this so we can see it better. It looks like there's two points, but remember, this is a function. We can't have two outputs in a function. This one is not included in the function because it's an open circle. So we don't include that one. We only use this point, which is included in the function. This is the point 1, 2. So this would be x, and this would be g of x. And g of 1, we would say, is 2. In our last example, we're going to identify the domain and range of the function. Then we're going to find h of negative 2 and h of negative 1. So our domain here, it looks like there's no uh, furthest left, right, because we're going to assume it's going to keep going down, and it's going to keep going down, and it looks like there's no furthest right. However, there is something missing in the middle of the domain. Right here, we're missing that point. The domain is not defined at zero. So we have to pull zero out of the domain, and the way we do that is we're going to say the domain is from negative infinity to zero, and then it's from zero to infinity. So we kind of just like pull it out of the real numbers, and we use the parentheses to say, well, we're, we're taking 0 out, it's not included, but everything else is. So we would say from negative infinity to 0 and 0 to infinity. The range, it looks like there's no least range, right? It's going to keep going down, 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 down. So it will go from negative infinity, and then it goes up, 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 all the way up to 3. 3 is included, so we'll use a bracket. And I just want to be careful here because of this undefined point right here. Um, but we do see that it does exist in the y's over here, so that, that y value of 1 is part of the range, and we would include it because it is defined somewhere. Okay, h of negative 2. Oh, look, look, I already have a point there. So negative 2, this would be the point negative 2, 1, 
And so h of negative 2 would be 1. h of negative 1, that was way up here. h of negative 1 appears to be 3. This has been a demo on domain and range of functions and also evaluating at specific points when we're given the graph. Thank you for stopping by.